Hello there. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use Fluid Designer for 3D printing to create jewellery items quickly and simply by just dragging and dropping and just modifying slightly objects that we've pre-created for you. Now if you go to our website at fluiddesigner.co.uk you can do download the uh, basic Fluid Designer application completely free of charge and install it on your system. Um, the objects that we're going to show you in today's lesson, however, do need to be paid for separately. And so if we start Fluid Designer up, it'll look something like this. Um, now, we're going to work on earrings in this particular video, so the earrings folder is already selected. Now, all the objects that are listed here uh, can be manipulated in a similar way as to the uh, ones I'm going to show you in this particular video. And uh, essentially, um, they can be drag and dropped onto the workspace and manipulated in different ways to create a wide range of earrings. So if I choose this object here, it's one I'm going to work with today, it's an Enipa curve. Uh, that's the basic uh, outline of the object. And uh, you can see the dimensions of it, it's about 15 millimeters across, so you know in the real world it's actually only that sort of size. Um, but obviously we're working on a computer and we can zoom in. Um, now, first thing to notice is it's got some depth to it, and we can actually change that. At the moment, it's got a cross-sectional diameter of 1mm. We could change it to 2.5mm, but it actually doesn't make it look very nice. Um, so, um, instead of 1mm, uh, we could, in fact, go down to a cross-sectional di diameter of 0 0.8 um, now that's more or less the smallest cross-section that you can actually 3D print safely and um, get your objects made in silver and polished up etc. So you don't want to really be making anything thinner than that. In fact, most printing houses won't actually print anything much thinner. Um, but we could actually change the cross-section. Instead of being rounded, we could change it to a kind of more square cross-section. If I zoom in there, you can see it's a, it's a more flatter, squarer cross-section compared to that. So these are different options that you can select and it will depend upon the particular uh, shape of the object as to how you want it to look. So if I just uh, view that from the top again. Um, now the next thing that we might want to do is we might want to add a ring uh, to this uh, object in order to uh, connect to a fish hook to connect to your ear. Well we can do that in uh, Fluid Designer by going to File and Append and uh, if we just look for the connectors folder and uh, I'm going to use a wire connector with a 2mm diameter hole and uh, we just select that object and append it, in other words add it to this particular workspace and if I just move that down a little bit you can see what we're dealing with here. Now you can see that this has got a different cross section. Well I'm going to delete the cross section of that object and just return it to its basic curve feature um, and I want to attach it to the end point of uh, this Anapa curve so I just need to rotate that one a little bit so I'm just rotating it 45 degrees and I just now need to reposition um, my connector and I'm just going to go into edit mode and just delete a couple of control points and uh, yeah that's the end of my connector now and it needs to overlap with uh, my Anapa curve when we join it together. So um, I've got my end, uh, my connector, my ring at the end here, which is just a, a curve at the moment. Um, I've got that highlighted and I'm just gonna highlight the end of the curve itself. And all I need to do is to join the two objects together. And when we do that, our ring at the end here takes on the same cross-sectional dimensions as the end of curve. So it's the same shape, basically. So when we 3D print it, that's the kind of earring that we would get. So that's a simple way of dragging and dropping an object onto the workspace and just adding a ring. Um, if I now view it from the top, the next thing that we could do here is, well, if we go into edit mode, and if I just zoom in slightly, and I'm just gonna select a couple of points there in the center line of the object and just zoom back out again. And if I drag this yellow arrow now, uh, you can see that I can manipulate, I can change the shape of my Enipa curve. So I can come up with a completely different design, very simply and easily. So that would be my new earring now. And again, that can still be 3D printed just as it is. So that's a couple of things that we could do with uh, this Enipa curve. 
Um, if I just uh, reload it again now, I'm just going to open up the same one again, the original one. Um, another feature that we've got built into these objects is that we can create uh, patterns from them by changing the number of them. So I can, for example, if I change this count value, I can create five copies of that curve. And at the moment, because of the settings that are uh, in place, we're getting a, a circular, uh, a rotational uh, object here. And we can offset this, so we can change the pattern again just by changing the offset values in the boxes here. And uh, so you can create different patterns uh, and you can also change different numbers of objects. Now you can't just select four or three there. We would need to change the angular setting as well, which we can do. So if I change that to 120 degrees, there's my pattern, this time with, uh, with three copies of the NFP curve. Now you do have to be careful if you're going to use this kind of pattern system that uh, you don't make objects that are too heavy to use as earrings. Now in addition to having a circular pattern, I can change my pattern to be horizontal. Uh, and there is also a feature in here to uh, add extra rows. Now as I say, you do need to be careful if you're doing something like this that you don't end up with too many objects that weigh too much. Now that would probably be okay uh, as an earring, so three or perhaps even four. And uh, if we just look at the size of it, yeah, I mean, it's starting to get long now. So that's um, 38 millimeters, so that's about four centimeters long. That's probably about as much as you'd want to go, but it'd probably be okay for the weight. All we need to do is to add, add a ring on at the end there. Um, now I'm just going to uh, reload that again and uh, just show you some other things that we can do. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm going to show you a 3D version of the same object now. Um, this is the Enipa curve that we've just been looking at there. Here's another version of the Enipa curve, and if, as you can see, the image looks a little bit similar at the moment, but if you look at the file name, it's slightly different. It's 301 instead of 001. And if I drag and drop that object onto the workspace, it is my Enipa curve, but it's a three-dimensional version of it. It's a solid Enipa curve. And again, we can manipulate this in the same way that we've just done with the flat one. Um, we could add a, an eye on at the end of it. Uh, we can go into edit mode and select points on it um, and uh, manipulate the object, change the shape of it. Um, or we can actually create rows and columns of the object um, but you, as I say, you do need to be a little bit careful with these that you don't go overboard. Okay, so we've just got a, 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 um, a column of the objects there. You don't need, you can't go overboard in terms of the uh, size because uh, you have, do have to consider the weight of the object. Um, now it's not too difficult in Fluid Designer to actually um, check the weight of an object. If I just go back to my original Enipa curve there. Um, if I just change it into a, a mesh first of all, and then if I just open up this panel here, this is uh, um, the toolbox, um, there's a tab on here and uh, on the side it says 3D printing, and if we select that and select volume, we'll be able to see what the volume of this object is, and so one copy of this Enipa curve is 0 0.0743 centimeters cubed, and what we're looking for here is anything less than 0 0.3. 0 0.3 equates to about 3 grams in terms of uh, a solid silver printed object. And you don't really want to be getting objects that weigh much more than that. So by checking the volume of an object, we can assess what its potential weight is once the object's finally made. Now again, I'm going to... Uh, reload that uh, Enipa curve because I'm going to show you something else I can do with it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the, the main body of the object and just return it to the pure curve. And uh, I'm just going to save this now to the desktop. And I'm just going to call it Enipa curve. And I'm going to add the word curve at the end there in capitals because I'm going to import this into a pendant that's already again predefined for you. So if I reload this, um, so up at the top of our, our uh, earrings uh, folder, we've got a range of objects here. 
um, 10 millimeter earring 15 millimeter 20 etc I'm going to choose uh, I'll choose the 25 one and just drag and drop that onto the workspace well what can we do with this well as you can see there are some objects uh, aligned around the outside of it well if I highlight one of those objects and just select cursor snap selection to cursor it places it in the center of my uh, 25 millimeter earring um, if I just go to view and top again and just zoom out a little bit um, I can select other objects here um, so I could select that circle for example and snap that into it uh, and then I could select a uh, vertical line here and snap that into the center of my earring and we could continue doing that with various objects around to build up a pattern in the center of my uh, earring here now what we then need to do is to join all of these to together so I've just uh, held down the shift key and if I just join those three curves that I've uh, placed in the center of the earring together and then if I highlight the earring itself and again go to uh, join you can see I can very quickly and easily create an earring using pattern uh, creating a pattern and then create an earring itself um, using these objects around the outside so that's one way of actually designing an earring just by manipulating these objects here and placing them in the center of the earring um, but the other thing that we can do with the uh, with this is that if I open it up again the 25 millimeter one this time the Enipa curve that I saved a minute ago I can actually import that object into the center of this earring just by going to file and append so if I uh, go to the desktop which is where I saved it so I've got Enipa curve earring curve and uh, if I just highlight that object and import it in you can see there's the uh, Enipa curve that we had before it's got no depth to it but that's not a problem all we need to do is um, scale it up a little bit so that it just touches the outline of this earring so I can scale it just by pressing S on the keyboard and you need it to just overlap now I probably really need to uh, modify this a little bit more just to get it to uh, work exactly but I'm not going to worry about that too much I'm just uh, going to apply that scale at the moment and if I just highlight the earring and just join those two together you'll see that there I get my Enup curve inside this circular earring um, and this object will print, will 3D print. So um, if I just go back to my earrings folder all of these objects that are listed here can, well almost all of these objects um, the exceptions are usually the ones that are in white these particular objects are not quite the same all the ones that are in grey can be drag and dropped onto the workspace and can be saved as curved as curves and can be imported into these basic earring shapes uh, as shown here alternatively you can just drag and drop um, or, or select cursor and snap selection to cursor and place objects in the center to build up earring shapes so uh, not very interesting one I'm creating there because I'm just doing it too quickly uh, but if I just go to file and new I'll just show you some others that I spent a bit more time doing um, so if we go yeah so if we go down to the Korean earrings for example here so these objects are being created in a similar sort of way by dragging and dropping objects into the center of the earring okay so um, that's uh, fluid designer for 3d printing that's some of the ways in which you can just drag and drop objects just change numbers on um, uh, menus to create simple earrings okay so um, oh yeah and uh, so as, as I've said once you've actually uh, created your earring you can in fact go onto the internet and if you go to shapeways Here's the Enipa earring for example, you can upload your earring to uh, Shapeways and uh, they'll tell you whether or not it's passed their 3D printing tests and they'll give you some idea of the price, what it will cost you to actually have it 3D printed and you can have them printed in uh, silver and brass and bronze and gold, uh, just whatever, you, whatever material you, f you would like to print it in. Um, and so the finished object would look 
something like this. Now this is actually a rendered image, but as you can see there's our Enapir earring um, which can be purchased over the internet in this instance from Shapeways, but there are other companies that do it as well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Fluid Designer for 3D printing, creating simple earrings. Thank you.